I'd like to ask y'all to especially pray for the ministry because we're a small group of people here in Hendersonville and we're saying some things that I believe that are the real truths of the gospel and that's especially about predestination, sovereignty, election. The scripture says that he predestined his family from the foundation of the world to be holy. And everyone was not predestined. We're predestined to conform to the image of Christ. We're elected to obedience. We're chosen to be holy. And when you start telling people that God wants them to die to the flesh, God wants them to rise in Christ and to live righteously and to crucify all their affections and what they want, what they think, you start getting people angry at you. Get some of the best so-called, quote, Christians around get upset at us because we tell them, die. And we say, first of all, we have to die. Well, we're going on TV, we're, we're on uh, television in Nashville three hours a week. We're on in uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee for one hour a week. And then we're, on, we're going on Chicago. And this is for the people who are listening to the tapes. We're going on in Chicago uh, every week on, what is it, on Wednesday? Is it Wednesday or? Uh, Fridays, 5 Fridays. o'clock. Oh, Fridays at 5 o'clock in Chicago. And then we're on in Fort Wayne, Indiana every Monday, and Glenn is trying to set up, looks like we're going to be going on in St. Augustine, Florida. And we've not only got this ministry, we give away tapes to people who want them for free. And uh, we don't charge for our tapes. We believe that people will support this ministry. Well, we got to where we were giving away about six to 700 tapes a week and I cut a lot of the mailing list, uh, mailing list down to about 85 tapes a week. And that's starting to build back up again, isn't it, Debbie? Mm -hmm. it's get, it doubles real fast. And the people that don't write to me and tell me that what they're learning and express something that they're learning will cut them down. Then if I hear from them again, we add them back to the list. Well, we've also got eight or nine prisons, I haven't stopped to count them, that we're mailing tapes to. And all the inmates in prison, we send these tapes for free. And I will say this to the inmates, we don't send these tapes, so you can use them to send messages out to your family. If you're really truly serious about learning about the Lord, we'll send these tapes free. I got a, I got a uh, letter from Ron Collier out here at Riverbend, Maximum Security Prison, in Hendersonville. We, we send tapes up to Brushy Mountain and to South Central Correctional Facility and we send them to West High Prison. We have a prison, prison in Hendersonville? Huh? We have a prison in Hendersonville? What did I say? <laughs> oh, did I? Nashville. <laughs> Remember the Maximum Security Prison in Nashville. And uh, then we send uh, tapes to Florida Correctional Institute and, and to uh, Bledsoe up at Pikeville uh, I can't think of all of them. About eight prisons right now we're mailing tapes to, but uh, in Morgan County Prison. Wartburg. Wartburg, yeah. But I'd like to read this to you from Ron. Ron is a very, very just bright fellow, and he's, uh, the other night when he was out there, week ago Friday, he's talking about how that, uh, how that he had learned so much from this ministry, and Ron's been an encouragement to me. We love those guys out there, guys like Ron and Gary and and, and Chico. Chico. Chico, you get me. Chico was out the other night. He just he shared some things with us, and I told we was talking to him about how we're all made of the same stuff. It's called flesh or sin, and we all got to confess in our our failures and our faults and our sins. And he sat there and did the same, and we all just felt like brothers, sinners in the flesh redeemed by Christ. Let me read this to you from Ron. Dear Jim, if it's God's will, I'll see you Friday, but I'm writing to let you know that I appreciate all that you've done for me in this institution and for all that you will do in the days to come. It's a bit strange to write someone you'll shortly be seeing in the flesh. However, I'm coming to realize that these letters mean a great deal to you, and they really do and also to the members of Grace and Truth Ministries. In my heart, I know I should have been writing long ago. I can only explain it this way. I am pretty much alone in my existence in this world. My family has written me off, or they have died off. So I protect myself from loneliness and despair by seeking God's will, and I am not always successful. That's why I welcome people like you into my life. Let me tell you, we're not always successful either, are we? 
Ron, you're just in the same world we're in. We're struggling too. Although there are a few who are nothing for Ron except that I'm another soul to preach to. Grace and truth gives no promises but explains that when I, what I'm experiencing is an orderly arrangement that God started long, uh, long before I realized his sovereignty. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. I'm so thankful that Ron sees that. And we don't make any promises. He meant that in a positive way because those charismatic preachers go out there to the prison and they tell them if they pray hard enough they can open the gates. And they're lying to these guys. Ron, we love you, brother. I have such a wonderful feeling of love, both phileo and agape, when I'm around all you guys. I am constantly learning what pleases God, but I wish he would like my load. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but he's not going to, Ron. He's not going to let up on any of us, is he, Eric? <laughs> it looks like I may be leaving RMSI, Riverbend Maximum Security Institute, and I'm going to regret that, mainly because I'll truly miss the times we spend together as a body of the church. I am just getting to know you all, and it saddens me that I may have to depart before it's time. Jim, I'm behind on your tapes. I've got about four that I haven't heard yet. I'm really trying to get a grip on the meaning of prayer, prosukamai, which means to bow to the will of God. And as soon as I get my verses wrote down, here's another tape on the subject. I'm thankful for your messages, for they keep me going and they feed this hunger. I had not planned to write all of this, for I only wanted you to know that I appreciated all that you have done and will continue to do to bring about an understanding of God's arrangement. Keep your light in your window and spread it throughout. Thanks for the agape with Joy Rock. Isn't it good? Oh, I tell you, Ron, we love you, man. And we will miss you, too. We are in a study on Sunday night. That's mind-boggling, isn't it? Isn't it, Connie? We're trying to go through some things in Revelation, and you can't study Revelation unless you go to Genesis first, and uh, we're not going to go back to Genesis, <laughs> but I will go back. The judgment of God is about sevens and fours, <clears throat> and for those that haven't heard the, the message on the seven, I don't know what I called it, seven candlesticks, seven stars, seven eyes, and, and we did a tape on the four beasts and the four judgments, it's just utterly amazing how God has structured all this. We've been talking about, last week we were talking about the moon turned to blood. We said that the word blood in the Old Testament, if I'm looking for my pens, hope somebody hasn't <laughs> walked off with them. There's one. Uh, we said that blood in the Old Testament, blood in the Old Testament is the word D-A-M, and it's pronounced D-A-W-M, dom, and it means to die, to die. And when the scripture says over in the book of Joel that the moon will be turned to blood, it means that the moon will die. And we said last week that the moon worshippers were the Babylonians. And what does the scripture tell us about the Babylonians? We're not talking about people who lived on the Euphrates River. We're saying that Babylon is a worldwide city. It's what it is. I've preached this for years. I was glad to hear, uh, I believe it was J.R. Church say the same thing the other day. I very seldom ever see anybody on TV that says anything that makes a whole lot of sense on those so-called television uh, shows. I call them shows because that's what they are. But he was saying the same thing that I've been saying for years. Babylon is an international city. It was once on the Euphrates River, and the scripture tells us in the 17th chapter of Revelation that Babylon is a she. And Babylon reigned over the kings of the earth, has made the kings of the earth drunk. And if everybody wants to find out where Babylon began, in history, Babylon began on the, on the Euphrates, and it was a place called Babel when Nimrod uh, pulled his great evil fire god system together in, he, in uh, Genesis 11 and 4. And the scripture says, they said, let us make us a name. The word name is Shem, and it was an imitation of, of God's, God's righteous system because Shem was the blessed <coughs> prophet of God. I said I wouldn't go, go to Genesis, but let me show you something. Let me show you why that this is an imitation. Go back over to Genesis. Go back over there, and I'll just show you where Babylon started 
and what it was an imitation of. Go back to Genesis, and then we'll go back to Revelation, because we're going to talk more about to and fro, and, and the church being persecuted by the world B system, because the world B system was definitely Babel, or Babylon, and that's where it started. Well, it actually started in the garden, then it was reproduced in the 11th chapter of Genesis. When Noah and his family come out of the ark, I want you to notice this. That if you start with Adam, Adam, and you look at the lineage of Adam in Genesis, the fifth chapter, you see Seth, and then you see a list of all of these men, and they come down to Noah. <coughs> this is actually the lineage of the priesthood of God because Seth took the place of Cain, or not Cain, excuse me, took the place of Abel who was a righteous man, he was the first high priest of the Bible. He offered the first blood sacrifice after God set the example to cover his mother and father's sins. It was as though God said, you're the man now, Abel. And then from Abel it came all the way down to Noah. And I want you to see this because I want you to understand why the world ruling Babylonian system is an imitation and what it, what it actually is. Well, Noah had three sons. He had Shem, and if you notice, Shem was always named first. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. God only blessed Shem. The word Shem means authority, authority. And the word name there's only one word for the word name in the Old Testament Scripture, and it is Shem. And I want you to see that God sent this blessing of the priesthood upon Shem, and that the Babylonian world beast system started with the imitation of Shem, is what it started with. And look over here when they came out of the ark. Look here. When they came out of the ark, the world beast system is Babylon there in the 17th chapter, and it goes back to the imitation. It's a counterfeit Shem is what it is. Mm -hmm. Shem is God's prophet. He rules the earth. Now let's go back here into Genesis, the 9th chapter. I didn't mean to go here, but this will help us to see. I don't know if I've pointed this out. Now look here in verse 20 of the 9th chapter. And, he, and Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah woke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. So that's Ham. He's the youngest, isn't he? Younger. Younger son. That was Ham. He was evil. And then he says, he saw what his younger son had done to him, and he said, Cursed be Canaan. That was the son of Ham. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. That is the only one of these three sons. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. He is the one that gets the blessing. He was the second born. We know that Ham was the first born. And we said that all these second borns received the blessing. Abel was the second born. And you know, every one of these men in that lineage, when you read that fifth chapter of uh, when you read that fifth chapter of Genesis, I believe that they were second borns. We know that. We know that Shem was second born, Abraham was second born, Isaac was second born, and Jacob was second born, and Ephraim was second born, and they all received that blessing from God. As we've said many times, Christ was the second born in the flesh. And out of Shem came Abraham, or the Semitic, or the Semitic peoples, and when I say Semitic, I mean the, the Shemites, and that's where we get the word Semitic from Shem. He was the blessed of God. All right, he was the one who received the blessing. That phrase there is one of the most important phrases in the book of Genesis. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Isn't that exactly what happened when Canaan occupied the land of Canaan many, uh, many, many years later, hundreds of years later? 
Then he says, God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Shem's going to rule Japheth too, isn't he? Well, we know that Japheth is the oldest, and Canaan shall be his servant. Ham is going to be subject to Shem, and Japheth is going to be subject to Shem. And let's see that Japheth is the second born. Over here in verse 21 of chapter 10, I mean, huh? I mean the third, excuse me, firstborn. That, that uh, Japheth is firstborn, Ham is the youngest, and Shem is the blessed of God, and he's the one that received the blessing, and you never find where Japheth or Ham received any blessings or their descendants. Then he says in the 21st verse of the 10th chapter of Genesis, Unto Shem also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. Now that's very significant because that shows that Japheth was the oldest son, Shem was second born, and he was the ruler, he was God's ruler. Now let me say this to you, I believe he held the office of Melchizedek. He was priest of Salem. I believe this was the man that gave offerings and that Abraham gave offerings and tithe unto because he was only like 280 something years old and he lived to be nearly 500. He was 280 something years old when, I've added it up and I've forgotten what it was, but he was 280 something when, when Abraham was like 87 years old. It was 200 years that Abraham came along. Now here is what they said when they started Babylon. Let's look at it one more time. Then we can really clearly understand. Here is the beginning of the beast world system. The beginning of Babylon in the 17th chapter said that seduces all of the earth. And this is the world system that's going to make war with the church. Now let's go back over here to the 11th chapter. We see that Shem received the blessing of God. He is God's ruler, isn't he? Isn't that what it says? Doesn't it say, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, He'll be the ruler of Japheth and Ham and all their families. This is God's authority, God's prophet, God's priest, God's king. His name is Shem. Now, people don't like that because Shem was a righteous man. They said, We don't like that. He's often strict, that preacher. Now, let's go to the fourth verse of chapter 11. And they said, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, Nimrod in his world system. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name, or it actually says in the Hebrew, let us make us a shim. We're tired of that righteous shim ruling us. Let us make us our own prophet that is in the picture, and that is the type of Shem, and we'll have a trinity. We know in history who that was. It was Ninus, or Nin, and his evil, wicked mother, Semiramis, and she was deified in the stars as the moon, or as Venus, and Nimrod was deified as a counterfeit Shem, a counterfeit authority of God, and they had an evil, wicked system. They had their trinity, Cush, who was called Hermes or Thor, or he had all of these other names, and his son was Nimrod, and sometimes Nimrod was his own mother's his own mother's husband, and sometimes he was the son, and it was a it was a, a mess is what it was, a muck. And they could control um, every bit of it. They could control and they could make it whatever they wanted to be, whatever they wanted to be. So Babylon when we see this woman making war with the church, and we do see that happening in the book of Revelation, what we see is a counterfeit system. We've said that she was the old virgin mother of the ancient world. She was represented as the moon. And the moon worshipers were the people of Babylon. And when the moon turns to blood, there will be no light from the moon. And there will be total chaos and total, total darkness. And that's because of the scorpions. And oh man, I was telling Connie before we started, the things that we have been studying have been overwhelming. It's overwhelming because God said he picked out Israel, and Israel was of the lineage of Shem, and God passed that lineage all the way to Jacob. And I believe those are the people that are in the, line, the lineage of God's Melchizedek priesthood. 
They were priests forever after the order. Christ is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And the word order is the word T-A-S-S-O. And it means an orderly arrangement. It's just like succeeding men in some lodge down here. They have an order in some lodge. And this was the, the great potentate uh, last year. And this is the one this year. And this is the one next year. And so forth. That's exactly what I believe these men all were. Now, what I want us to go to, I'm, try, I'm going to try to explain some things to you tonight about the beast. And the beast is the world ruling system. We see that same system back in Daniel 7. One more time, <laughs> Daniel 7. We see Babylon as the... Let me show you all this. The garden. In the garden, you had the beast. In the, in the garden, you had the beast. The beast was the serpent. Was the serpent. And his image was, or his representative was Eve, wasn't she? Sure she was. She was... She was the image, and the word image means icon, and it means representative. It doesn't mean over there in Revelation 13 a statue. It's talking about a representative, and Adam took up the, la the, the last part of that evil trinity. And God had to redeem Eve and Adam out of that. Then that same system was started at Babel again, and then later on, the Babylonian Empire rose up and it had the same worship as Babel and then on down the line you had, uh, you had Babylon, Babylon and then you had uh, Persia, Persia, Babylon fell to Persia, Persia fell to Greece and then Greece fell to Rome and that is this system here in Daniel 7, one more time look at Daniel 7 Daniel 7, and this is the system or a false shim that's going to make war with the church during the tribulation. And I'm going to try to get to this. I'm just going to read this very quick. And you see this world system. The beast never changes. This is the same beast of Revelation 13. In verse 3 of chapter 7, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another, came up from the sea. The great sea... And it says that, that uh, four winds strove uh, of the heavens, strove upon the great sea, and the great sea was the Mediterranean, and all of these empires had their headquarters uh, upon the great sea in the sense that all of their peoples were uh, on the boundary line of that great sea. And then he says, the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another, and these were the four, four, four world empires. First was the lion, had eagle's wings, and the wings thereof were plucked up, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given unto it. Of course, that was Nebuchadnezzar. When God gave him a heart of flesh and converted him, put him on his all fours, and then she was overthrown. Babylon was overthrown by the bear, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side and had three ribs in the mouth of it, and they had three great conquests, Lydia, Babylon and Egypt, between the teeth of it, and they said, un, uh, said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. And they had the greatest armies of Persia. This is Persia. They had the greatest armies. At one time they had over, uh, they had over a million and a half in one of their armies. And they, had, they swept across the land like a great bear. And then, verse 6, After this I beheld, and, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, and the beast had also four heads, and there were four generals that came out of this system, this world beast system. And since God never changes, not only does righteousness never change, evil never changes, this, I want you to notice, this is the false system of shim, of authority. So when you say name or authority, it goes back to God's authority, shim. That's why I said, blessed be the Lord God of shim. That is a very significant statement. You know, I never saw that for years. When I began to see that, I said, oh, man. And, and I never saw that he was second born till, till I was probably in my 40s. Now, he says, And this I saw in the night, visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. And, of course, the third beast was Greece. 
with the four heads, the four generals that came out of that, Lysimachus, Seleucus, Ptolemy, and Cassander. These were the four generals that came out of the Persian, out of the Grecian Empire, which was the, the leopard. And then after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And now the ten horns, we find that on the beast in Revelation 13 and 1. And we find this beast coming up out of the bottomless pit. And we said this was not a hole in the ground. This was the spiritual seas where the woman sits and it was peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Now this is the beast world system that's going to declare war, war with the church. Now let's read the next verse. I considered the horns and beheld. Behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Now, I do not believe any man knows what these horns are, regardless of what the great scholars are saying, because they will arise at the very end of time with the world beast system. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man. The ten horns will have power one hour with the beast to destroy the Babylonian harlot of wealth and self, the one who said, let us make us a shim, let us make us a name. And a mouth speaking great things. Now this little horn, we do understand that it is definitely the leader of the Antichrist world system. Let's go down here to verse, let's go on down over here to verse 19 of the same chapter. Then I would know the truth of the forced beast. We know what it is. We know it was Rome. Well, we know that Rome was outlawed, the Roman Empire, they began to worship all of these deities, Venus and Jupiter and Zeus and all of these Greek gods. We know this system was outlawed and it was brought into back into the Roman church and I believe what Alexander Islam says, I believe that's the head that was wounded and was healed. Because for, I, I forget what they said, I believe it was about 27 years, something along that line, 27 years that the Roman Empire, with all of her icons, the worship of Venus, Jupiter, Hercules, was outlawed. And just a few years later, all of that was re-implemented into the Roman Church. And when it was implemented into the Roman Church, the titles and the names of the icons of the statues were changed. And I believe wherever there is, now let me just show you this. I haven't said it this way, but wherever there is a let us be proud and make our own name wherever you find that you find that that Babylonian system is a system of wealth and self I believe the headquarters for that system after this has moved to Washington DC people say well how can you say it's moved because it has moved every time it has been overthrown by a previous empire. I believe what we've got, we've had the system transferred to the most powerful system in the world. What were all these systems? What was the Roman church? <clears throat> Wasn't it the most powerful system going? It ruled heads of states. Wasn't Rome the most powerful system? Wasn't Greece? Yes. Wasn't Persia? An empire is a sovereign power that totally rules. Now let me ask you, what is ruling the world today? Isn't it democracy? democracy? Right. Isn't it the system of capitalism? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it the system of money and wealth and self? And that's all that Revelation 18 is about when it describes the destruction. And if you'll notice something, I don't know if I have said this before, but in Revelation 17 and 18, you'll find an interchange. You'll find an interchange between the harlot it's as though one is interchangeable with the other. The harlot and the ruling system. It becomes as though it's one entity. She sits upon the beast till the very end and it's though it's, she's a part of it. It is though she is attached to it and that when she goes, the beast goes. And we've said before that the seven mountains 
where the woman sat. It's more than just Rome. Rome actually had more than seven mountains. A mountain was a ruling city of an empire. And I have, and I'll be honest with you, I've heard everybody, I've heard the best scholars talk about what are the seven systems. Well, the scriptures, I have looked at the garden one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it says that the, that the seventh, that there'll be an eighth head, but it will be the seventh. Yes. The same as the seventh. Now, I don't know that it's not, in any, you say, but what about Assyria? Assyria is slash Babylon. Every time you find, sometimes the Babylonian kings would be called the Assyrians. So these are the world systems that have ruled, and the first image was in the garden, and that was Eve. And you find that the image that represents the world ruling system and speaks for the world system, she rides upon the beast and says, let us make us a name, let us be proud. We will imitate Shem, we will have a form of godliness, but we'll deny the power thereof. The word power is the word dunamis. And the gospel is the power. What they deny is the resurrection of Christ. It doesn't matter if it's First Baptist Church or the First Catholic Church or the Hindus. If you don't believe God, you're all going to hell together. Or it don't matter if you're a Buddhist. It doesn't matter if what you are, if you don't believe in the death of the flesh and the resurrection of Christ in us, then you're a part of the world based system. It's a spiritual system. It's what it is. Now, I don't know that this is exactly it. But I do know one thing. The first beast in the world ruling system started in the garden. That's when Satan, the word devil is the word diabolos, one of the words. And it means to cast down. And when he cast God off the throne of Eve's life, she began to rule herself. And they had a majority. They had a democracy in the garden. It's what they had, and they had a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And then they begin to distribute fortunes to themselves. That's the word deamon, the other word for the Greek word devil. And that's exactly what they did. I don't know, but this makes more sense to me. I have wrestled with that for years to find out what are the ruling systems. We see four of them right here. You see four of them here, and you have the one at Babel, which is the one that started it after the flood. You have the flood right here. And the original system was the garden. That was just the reinstitution of the Christ mass system or the tree worship system of the Garden of Eden, the sex worship when Adam and Eve hid themselves. And we did a tape on that. Now, the church is going to be at war in the middle of the tribulation. Now, we here at Grace and Truth Ministries, we believe the church is going to be here in the tribulation. I want us to go down in the same chapter and we have a prophecy of the church being at war with the, or the beast being at war with the church. And we're going to read some of this. <clears throat> at, the, at war with the church, the church is going to be changed at the last trump. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51, when it's changed at the last trump, that's after the tribulation of those days in Matthew 24, 29 through 31. There, the trumpet will sound after the tribulation of those days. Now let's read here. Let's go and read here. He said in verse 19, Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured breaking pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. He was a, he was a conglomerate of all the other previous <coughs> three. And of the ten horns that were on in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and the best of scholars tell us that means to have eyes means to have intelligence or understanding. And a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. And that's the world system at the end of time where he's going to make war with the church. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. And he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. You remember scatter abroad, breaking pieces is always related to scatter abroad. 
What did they say over there in Genesis 11? Lest we be scattered abroad upon the earth, we need an identity. We need to have an identity of self. Let us make us a name. And God said, because you have transgressed my law and not worshiped according to, the, to my prophet, my priest, my king, Shem, I'll break you in pieces and scatter you abroad. And that's what God did to Israel. He said, I'll scatter you abroad. Notice how all this ties together. He said, if you don't keep my law and my commandments, I'll scatter you abroad. And there you've got... The beast scattered abroad, God would send four judgments. He'd send sword, famine, pestilence, and beast. And the beast was this world ruling system. And he brought Babylon against, he brought Assyria, first of all, against northern Israel, scattered Israel abroad. And then he brought Babylon against southern Judah, scattered them abroad. And the word scatter, we've said, is the word S-K-O-R-P-I-Z-O, scatter. And it comes, we get the word S. S-K-O-R-P-I-O-N, scorpion. And the scorpions were the evil teachers. And they don't differ in the ninth chapter of Revelation. The scorpions that come out of the bottomless pit, <coughs> they come out teaching. You know what the scorpions are? They, boy, this is really heavy. They very well can be the image of the beast. They can be equivalent because scorpions are evil teachers, aren't they? And who represented and who went around preaching for Satan in the garden? Eve. Eve. Well, look at the scorpions. Notice how all this stuff intertwines. Ba the Babylonian harlot preaches her own doctrine, doesn't she? Sure she does. They said, let us build us a city and a tower. The word tower is the word migdal. And it means... Pulpit. What do they preach from their pulpit? Pride. Let us make us a name. Money, self, wealth, and stuff. Back to this morning. Do we see that? The scorpions are evil teachers within the Babylonian system, the Babylonian harlot. Isn't she riding the beast, speaking for the beast? Certainly she is. Well, her leaders of the Babylonian system are her preachers, as Eve was the preacher in the garden. Yep. And notice how we're going back to deifying the earth as Mother Earth and we're worshiping the earth. And have you, have you noticed how the Methodist Church is bringing the, and the Episcopal Church, they're, they're putting their approval upon homosexual, lesbian uh, preachers and how the Methodist Church is ordaining women preachers when God said, if a man desires the office of a bishop, let him be the husband of one wife. I don't know how a lesbian can be a husband of one wife. And I'm not, I'm not on a, I'm not trying to ride a horse against lesbianism. Homosexual either. Yeah, how can you be the husband of one wife? You understand what I'm saying? The scorpions are going to be preaching evil doctrines. Remember Ezekiel, the second chapter. Ezekiel was in Babylon and. The Lord said, these are scorpions, don't be afraid of their words. And Jesus said that hirelings scatter abroad because they don't own the sheep and they don't care about the sheep. So scorpions can really be equated with the Babylonian harlot. They can be the preachers of the harlot. You see that? What they're preaching is that wealth doctrine of Revelation, the 18th chapter. All the things that thy soul lusted after when you see the death. Have y'all noticed how this thing interchanges? What is it the beast does? The beast, God said, I'll, I'll bring the beast against Israel to scatter you abroad. Scatter abroad. Well, what is it that evil teachers do? They're called scorpions. And they scatter. Then the word scorpion comes from the word scatter. Scorpions don't mean to scatter abroad. So at the end of time, we can have a spiritual, we can have a spiritual beast, which would be the, the Babylonian system worldwide that preaches a doctrine of let us make us a name. These are scorpions. They preach smooth words, don't they? And the world beast system gets his the world beast system gets his authority from the dragon, from the serpent. And the word dragon just means a serpent. That's all it means. 
And the word serpent is the word nakash. And the word dragon is the word D-R-A-K-O-N. And both of them mean to fascinate, fascinate, enchant, or feel good. And when you preach a feel-good doctrine, you preach a let us make us a day, let us be proud, lift ourselves up. God wants us to have all the blessings of the world, and we don't need to crucify. And those of us who preach truth, we preach death to self during the middle of the tribulation. War is going to be made against us. Let's go on and read the rest of this here. And of the ten horns, oh wait a minute, down in verse 21, and I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, that's Christ, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth. Catholicism has been doing that. And Catholicism is not just merely Roman Catholicism. It's the Grecian, Persian, Babylonian fire god worship of Babylon that goes back to the garden where they imitate it. And didn't, didn't the serpents say the same thing that they said down here at Babel? Mm -hmm. They said, let us make us a name. Let us be our own authority. And Satan said, in the, in the form of the serpent, said, you will be as God. You will be your own authority. And you can dictate what is right and wrong. If you notice, that just goes straight down and none of it changes. Isn't that what America is saying now? Why we're Christians and we're a Christian nation and we can define it for ourselves. Right is whatever the majority votes for it to be. That's right. Well, what did they do? What did, all, what did they do up here? Didn't they change? Didn't they change God's law? Huh? That's exactly what it goes on to say. They changed the law of God and they made it Eve's law. Uh, they made it Nimrod's law. They made it the Caesar's laws and all the rulers of those world systems. And they made it the Pope's law. And now it's whatever men vote for it to be, the majority. That's what it is. Huh? Democracy. Men get together and vote. And they say, I don't think God really means it anymore when he says if a man lie with a man, this is an abomination and both of them will die. They don't mean that. God doesn't mean that anymore. If two men are struggling and, and uh, if two men are struggling together and they bump into a woman who's pregnant and she loses the baby, they will give eye for eye, life for life, tooth for tooth, burning for burning. Oh, but God doesn't mean that anymore. And we've changed the law. That started in the garden. God didn't really mean what he said. Now that's what he says. Let's go to read this. And the fourth beast shall be... Uh, well, we read that. And the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He's going to be at war with the church. In that war, where was the church begin? Back here in the garden. The war started back there, and he was wearing, he has been wearing out the saints since the garden. But they are going to have a time at the end of time for three and a half years. The 70th week of Daniel's 70 weeks during the middle of the tribulation, he will cause the sacrifice, the, the leader of the world system that says, let us make us a name, let us be proud, I believe it very well could have its seat in Washington, D.C. And some people say, well, no, Babylon's going to rise up on the Euphrates River again. The 51st chapter of <laughs> Jeremiah says, no, that Babylon is desolate forever. Hold your place there and look at this in Jeremiah. Look at this. He said, when that Babylon, that's why the scripture says, over in the book of Revelation 13, or uh, uh, 18 and 1, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. It'll fall once as a literal system. It'll fall the second time as a world spiritual city. Is what it will fall. Now look over here in, in Jeremiah. I'll show you this. I, I've read it before, but I've never pointed it out. But I'm, I've, I've said that a hundred times. But let me show you this because I want you to see. He says in verse 24 Jeremiah of what? chapter 51, 
chapter 51 of Jeremiah, this Babylon that fell, that Babylon that fell will never rise again, only in the form of a spiritual system. Now look here in Babylon, in the Babylon, in Jeremiah 51 and 24, I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea, and this Jeremiah was prophesying, as Israel was falling to Babylon, and he was speaking of the literal Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar came in and carried uh, southern Judah into captivity. And to all the inhabitants of Chaldea, all their evil that they have done in Zion, in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. Babylon was a mountain or a place of authority that executed the law of let us make us a name. They changed the law of God to their own law. Saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth, they made all the earth drunk, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and make thee a burnt mountain. Isn't that the way she is destroyed in the 18th chapter of Revelation, when all the merchants of the earth will wail because of her burning? And all that she's selling to the world, this let us make us a name, pride, self, and the United States is the head of that. That's why this doctrine we preach here of death to self makes people so mad and so angry. It's not American. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Look at, the next, look at the next verse, verse 26. He said, this Babylon will never rise again. Yes, it's, it's not like, American. Huh? It's not American. Do y'all see what I'm saying here? I haven't drawn this out this particular way. I don't know that that's exactly it, but that looks... Those are the systems. See, Egypt didn't rule the world. Egypt wasn't an empire. Egypt, Egypt, put, Egypt was an instrument in the hand of God, but Egypt was never an empire. The only, these are the only empires that I could find, I've been able to find scripture that ruled the world. Babel was the first one, the garden, in the garden, the serpent, uh, uh, the serpent was the first ruling world system. And then it's the same beast world system here and on down. These, this is all I've been able to find so far. I've wondered how those seven came out over there and how the eight could be a part of the seven. The Roman church is no longer <coughs> ruling, but their attitude is ruling, and now we are embracing, the charismatics embrace the Roman church. The charismatic is the biggest, fastest growing system of religion in the world. It is the godless system of the devil's doctrine. Martin, it distributes fortunes. Martin huh? Luther protested against the Roman church but adopted all of their <coughs> customs. Yeah, that's right. The breaking of bread, or the Lord's Supper, quote unquote, yeah. the baptism. Mm -hmm. and exactly. The whole thing. <laughs> Basically, they brought a lot of bad things with them when they came out of it. But have you noticed, that's why I say I believe the system, it's the system that rules the world. What's ruling the world right now? It's the attitude of democracy and capitalism. It's the most selfish system that's ever existed. Uh -huh. The so-called Christian society of America has been built, has been built on the godlessness of the Garden of Eden. Democracy me and Adam and the serpent have voted God. We're going to... God, democracy means a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They took three and they said, God, it's three against one. You're wrong. You're out. We're ruling. You know what they said? It's, then she began to distribute the tree, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's, what she, that's all that's in the world. And she started distributing. And that's what this system... If you'll notice, what's going on in the garden is what's going on in America today. Right. Same thing. And when we tell people to die, they get mad, don't they? Mm -hmm. Same devil. Now, can y'all see why? Can y'all see why there's going to be war against the church? Mm -hmm. You know the church is going to be here. We're already, they're already making war with us, aren't they? The elect will become unapostate and yeah. start standing up. Yes. That's just like Glenn was talking, that guy. <clears throat> Talking about death to self, and he ran like a stripy leg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ran like a what? Stripy leg. Okay, stripy leg. Okay, yeah. All right, let's go back over here to Daniel 7. Go back to Daniel 7. Verse 25, He shall speak great words against the Most High. 
How do you speak against God? You blaspheme. You speak against what did the servant say? God. What did the servant say? He shall not yeah, he shall not die. God doesn't want that for us. He wants us all to have money yes. and stuff and things. Isn't that what God wants for the Christians? He's just kidding. But you notice everything. Start read. Go back and read the third chapter of Genesis. That's where the beast world system started. That's where democracy started. That's where capitalism started. Distribute to self. If you read, the, I've said it a thousand times here. If you read the word capitalism out of an intercollegiate dictionary. It reads the same way, same meaning as the word devil, daemon, distribute fortunes. It actually means to amass the fortunes of the world for the individual. That's what it means. Then you have a diabolos and you rule yourself. Diabolo meaning to cast down. That's what Satan told Jesus. He said, cast yourself down. I'll give you the world. That's the system of the beast and it started there. Everywhere you find the beast, you find the original prototype of it all in the garden, in the serpent, speaking to Eve. And the original image of the beast, the word image means representative. The one who speaks for him is the world system, I believe, that is this nation and all that we represent. I'm not saying that we're all there is to it. It will be an amalgamation of this nation and the worlds because our president is the most powerful man in the world and they're, and they're right at this time, they're pulling together a world order so that we can have one international law. Well, democracy is infusing the entire world, yes. so what do you think? Yes, and everybody says, and where does all the world want to go to? Here! Why? The American dream! Make money! That's what it's about. Now I'll read this next verse here. He shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the, the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. And that word time means a year. They're surely changing laws. Yeah. Yeah, that word time is the word I D D A N. It means a set time, or it's used in the Old Testament to denote year. Now, a time times and the dividing of times. A time, one year, times is two years, and the dividing of times is half a year. That's three and a half years. Half of the last 70th week of Daniel's 70 weeks, three and a half years are three and a half days on God's calendar of years, weeks of years. 1,260 days. 1,260 days. We're going to read that. Now, I'll see what I'm saying. Now, that will be when war starts all out war, that'll be the desolation of abomination. And I'm not going to deny that the Jews are building a temple in Israel. But the literal, that is not the temple that the scripture is saying, speaking of desolation of abomination. That would not be an abominable thing. An abomination means to stink up something righteous. Well, let me draw this again. Wait a minute. Here's what an abomination is. Here's what an abomination, when they had the temple, if they went into the, an abomination was either to offer up, stra offer up strange incense, that's what Nadab and Abihu did on that altar of incense. When it went up before God, they offered the wrong prayers to God. Or it meant to go inside the most holy, the holy of holies, and for the <coughs> priests to sprinkle blood upon the Ark of the Covenant of a land that had spots on it. That it wasn't exactly, or or maybe the priest himself didn't have on his pure linen garments, God struck him dead. It meant to stink up a holy thing. If the Jews start offering a lamb in Israel on a literal altar, and someone stops it, that will not be an abomination to God. That will be a righteous work. When he says, let's go back to Daniel 9, go back to Daniel 9, Verse 27, speaking of the last week of Daniel, 70 weeks. We know that 69 of the weeks are passed from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem in Nehemiah, the second chapter, when Artaxerxes gives this law to Nehemiah until Christ comes into Jerusalem and Luke, the 19th chapter, as the Messiah, the Prince, on the uncultivated ass. We know that 69 of those weeks are passed. Then we know there's a gap 
period for 2,000 years called the times of the Gentiles. And we know at the end of time, the 70th week will begin with the confirmation of the covenant with many for one week. And he says so in verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, three and a half years down the road, he's going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. What sacrifice is it? It's the sacrifice in the temple of God. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which temple ye are, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile this temple, him shall God destroy. And we are offering a body, our bodies, Romans 12, 1, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and we are called the oblation. The oblation was the bread offering that was offered every morning at 6 o'clock, every evening at 6 o'clock, with the lamb that was without spot and without blemish. Christ is in us, causing us to die to this flesh. This is the temple where the sacrifice and the oblation will cease, and for three and a half years, it's not hard to see as you teach these doctrines of predestination and death to self. It's not hard to see how we'll be persecuted, is it? No. People are making war right now with us, aren't they? Our families are making war. They don't want to hear this. They won't say, well, look, as long as you accept Christ and Jesus is your personal Savior, that's enough. The Bible doesn't teach any such thing. It teaches daily repentance. One guy said, you mean you've got to get saved every day? I said, no. When Jesus said, except you repent, you'll perish, it's God that works in you, both to willing to do in His good pleasure, and He's causing you to turn from self to Him daily and offer the daily oblation. And that's this body. And the sacrifice, that's Christ in us. He's, causing us to die. He said, when he said, he said, you mean we've got to get saved every day, he thought yeah. you meant walk down the aisle every day. Yeah, that's what We're he thought. We're saved every day, that's for sure. That's right. <laughs> and he said for time and times and half a times, didn't he? Let's go over here to Revelation 11.2, and then we'll see. Now we know this. Revelation 11.2, and we'll look at these, and I'll stop and come back next <clears> week. <throat> I don't know if I've really said that about Shem or going back to the garden, and I believe that's where the original world beast system was. I believe we're consummating with America down here. And I'm not saying America's the end of it all, but I believe the America, that America is the leader of this godless thing. <coughs> now, let's go to Revelation 11. Let's read verses 1 and 2. Revelation 11. And then we'll, we'll see this. War is going to be made with the saints. He's going to wear out. And that word wear out means to expend means to tire them out. It's the same thing as when you say, I'm going to wear you out if you don't behave yourself. You tell your kid that. It means the same thing. Now, Revelation 11. Look at Revelation 11. <coughs> Let's read 1 and 2. There was given unto me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. What's the temple of God? Us. That's us. And who's measured inside the temple? Remember, bound, those who are in the boundary line of God, God said in the garden to Adam, he said, stay in my bounds. Don't get out of my bounds. That's God's law. And all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. We are measured in the temple of God. Those of us who are spiritual Jews. And then he said, and the altar and them that worship therein, and the court which is without the temple, that was called the Gentile court, where they could come in if they wanted to, but it wasn't a holy place. Leave out, leave the Gentiles out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. The holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months, and on the Jewish calendar of 360 day years, that is three and a half years, or three and a half days of a spiritual day. And they're going to tread Jerusalem. And what is Jerusalem? Who is heavenly Jerusalem? In Hebrews 12 and 22, that is the church of the firstborn, the heavenly Jerusalem. The Antichrist is going to wear out the saints for three and a half years. Yes, we're going to be here till the last trump. Now, and then he goes into the two witnesses. We're not going to go into that. Let's go to Revelation 13 and 5. Well, let's just read down to 5. Revelation 13, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This beast comes out of the bottomless pit. 
the sea and the pit are the same. We've already talked about that. If somebody wants that, we'll send them that day. That's the word abusos, and it means a pit or a place for a sea with no bottom. Where does the woman sit? She has the scorpions coming out of her mouth. The false teachers, those who scattered the sheep abroad and have seven heads and ten horns. Isn't this the same beast over there in Daniel 7? Yes, it is. And upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Ten authorities will rise and destroy it. For one hour they'll have power with the beast at the very end. Over there in Revelation, the 17th chapter, in the 18th chapter, and they will destroy the system of Babylon. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard. There's the picture of, of Greece. And his feet were the feet of a bear. There's Persia. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And it's a conglomerate of all these. It is the Romanistic empire of self. It's the fire god system. And we've got their... We've got their unholy days. We've got their senate. We've got their emblems. We've even got their ego on everything that we've... Their might and their power and their pride. And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death. I believe that's when the Roman Empire... That head, a head was a... A mountain was a world empire headquarters that, that executed a law and for about 27 years that was outlawed and reinstituted into the Roman Catholicism, according to Hislop, and I, that's the best explanation I've ever seen of this. Because this is not a him, that word his power, his seat, is the word autu, A-U-T-O-U, and it means more properly, according to the Greek authorities, its, David, its authority. Then he says, And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, the one with the smooth words. Let me say it again, Romans 16, 17, 18. Mark them which caused divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines that ye have learned and avoid them, because these serve not our Lord but their own belly. And those who serve their own belly, they hate the cross of Christ that says, die to things and stuff and self. They worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Blasphemy doesn't mean to be cursing epithets and, and spewing at the mouth with fire. It means smooth words. Hey, Eve, God doesn't mean what he says. We can make our own law. We can have our own shim, our own authority. And after all, God loves us all. He wants us all to have. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, making war with the church. Three and a half years. And you remember the two witnesses? They're slain in the street, and that's the priest and the king. These are the two that stand beside the Lord of the whole earth, quoted from the last verse of the fourth chapter of Zechariah. And the two witnesses lie in the streets three and a half days. Three and a half days is half of a week. That's the church. It takes two witnesses to put a man to death in Israel. We declare the guilt of the evil, godless world that don't have God's mark in their forehead, and that's talking about authority. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle. There's the church. The tabernacle, a tabernacle is a mobile temple, moving, running. Pray not your flight be not in winter. Because this is a terrible time of war. And his open his mouth, and the word tabernacle is the word skinne, and it means a wife as useful to the use, used for the usefulness of the husband, and the tabernacle is you and I. If you remember, the tabernacle is what they call the temple in the wilderness. A temple was a stationary tabernacle, is what it was. We're going to be on the run. And he's going to be making war with the tabernacle of God and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The word saint, we get the word sanctify from that. It's not talking about just Jews. He's making war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. This is the world beast system over all nations. That's what all these empires were. Now let's go to, back to Revelation 
11, and you see the two witnesses. After their testimony, they're slain. The beast comes up out of the bottomless pits and makes war against them in verse 7. Makes war. That's the church, the two witnesses. It's not Elijah and Moses. <coughs> I, I hate to hear that because they're not the two. The two that stood beside the Lord of the whole earth were the priest and the king. They were always, God would go straight to the prophet say, go over here. These are my two representatives in the earth. You're the one that I speak to. You're my prophet. And a prophet was one who spoke for God, and then he would appoint two to represent him. It was the priest and the king. And he has made us priests and kings. That's us. And he says, He shall overcome them and kill them, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called. We're talking a spiritual, allegorical picture. It's called Sodom, Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Half of a week, when he makes war with us, we'll lie throughout the streets of the cities of the world. We'll die for our testimony. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts one to another, because there's two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, after they're dead for three and a half years, and after we're slain and they make war, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And this is our resurrection when we go out to meet to the Lord. The time element of this is the same time element of 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, that, that we which are alive and remain, and the word remain means to survive. Survive what? The war of the Antichrist against the saints. I don't know where in the world somebody comes up with that fourth chapter of First Thessalonians. They have no time element at all. How can that be pre-tribulation pre rapture when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with a voice of the archangel and the word shout is the word kaluo and it means a war cry. What's he doing making a war cry at the beginning of the tribulation? And what does they mean? We which are alive and remain... That word means to survive. Survive what? The war with the saints. There's going to be some people alive. You know, it said right here in 2 Timothy 4 and 1, I charge thee, they before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. At his appearing, yes. That sounds like last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Judge. Doesn't say the word and kingdom. Yeah. Doesn't say I'm going to come back and then we're going to judge. It says I'm going to come back and yeah. that's it. Game over. Yes. You know, right. The word appearing is the word epiphania. It comes from epi and phanos. It means epi, a superimposition, a total covering of the shining. The word phanos means to shine. That's his second epiphany. And when he comes in his second epiphany, he's not going to lay down in a manger in Bethlehem. He's going to straddle a, a white steed in the skies. I'm sure that's that's allegorical. I don't know exactly how it's going to look, but it's going to split the skies from one end of the heaven to the other. And there's going to be war with the saints, and I like what Alexander Hislop said. He said, the way you make war with a man, see, they're not going to go out here. I always thought, I always thought this was real stupid. You mean the earth is going to, they're going to go out here and uh, shoot good. cannons at the sky? I know what you're thinking. They're not going to shoot cannons at the sky. The way a man makes war with Terry, he starts giving his wife a hard time. Yes. That's the way, the way you make war with Eric, just give Eric a bad time. Give Karen a bad time. Jump all over her. And if somebody wants to get my eye up, my eye up I may be a little bitty guy. Start picking up my wife and you'll make war with me. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to make war with the wife of the living God. That's the church. And that goes back to Israel was married to the Holy One of God. That's what the Scripture says over there in the 54th chapter of Isaiah. And, and Jesus, is married, Jesus is married to the church. He's called the Holy One of God. The Holy One is married to God over... Or the, the Israel is married to the Holy One over in the Old Testament. The church is married to the Holy One in the New Testament. Does that mean there's two bodies? No, there's one church, one body. And we're going to be heirs... And of the same body, that's the mystery of God that's finished in the 10th chapter of Revelation. When Jesus comes back, puts one foot on the land and they're on the sea. 
This is war! And you know what? We're already seeing war. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now, let me just give you a couple more of these. Revelation 12. 12. Let's read here. This picture of Revelation 12 is a... Notice these, these are all separate visions. I'm going to say that. These are not sequential. They don't come in sequence. They're separate. Because you've got, especially because of that tenth chapter of Revelation, when Christ comes back, puts foot, one foot on the land, the other on the sea, and we believe that's Christ because he's got the bow over his head, and that is the bow of God from the Old Testament Genesis. It's the eye of the Lord. It's the iris. It no it's the one. rainbow, huh? It ain't no one. No, no, it's not. <laughs> now look at Revelation 12. Let's read here. 12, and let's read here first few verses. All right. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun. This is the church, Israel. We're spiritual Jews with the heart. We've been circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. I don't know why people don't understand. A Jew is not a Jew outwardly, but a Jew of the heart. I don't understand that. When Jesus gave Peter the keys to the kingdom... He handed them to the church, and the keys were the keys to the book of the law, and he said, bind and loose, and that meant permit and forbid according to God's book. Why would he give it to Peter, the beginning of the church? Because they had that in the synagogue of Babylon. They said the keys to the kingdom was the keys to Israel. The kingdom of God was called Israel. And the moon was under her feet and upon her head, a crown of twelve stars. We ain't got time to go in the twelve. It's the number of the church, the number of Israel, the number of the bread. The showbread on the table of showbread, that was referred to as Israel, and we're called the bread. The twelve loaves that were picked up. Yes, and we're the pierced bread, and the word pierced is the word parazzo, in the, in the, the, that those loaves were pierced. And when the scripture says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, the word trial is the word parasmos, and it comes from the word parazzo means pierced. That's We're the pierced bread, just as Israel was the pierced bread. We're of the same body as Israel. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, the beast... That's, it's, you could call this a dragon. God never changes. Evil never changes. This is the dragon or the serpent of the garden, the leader of the world beast system, isn't it? Sure it is. Because the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them into the earth. We know that happened before the world began. This is a panoramic picture of the dragon, Satan himself, making war, taking a third of the angels from heaven with him. A third followed him, a third follows Gabriel, a third follows Michael. These are all the leaders. And did cast them into the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is Christ. Did not Israel, didn't Christ, isn't he the lion of the tribe of Judah? Didn't he come out of Israel? Yes, he did. It isn't Israel the church. Yes, it is. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. That's Christ. And her child was caught up into the uh, God in his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God. For what? This is the church being delivered from the persecution when he will wear out the saints, this beast, this dragon, that they should feed her here a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that's more specific than 42 months because it is exactly to the day, half of seven years of seven 360 day years. It's exactly half of that. <laughs> and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. We know that that is something that has happened. 
and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. This happened before the foundation of the world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth. Now that word deceiveth is continual in its tense. He's constantly continually deceiving the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down. And is it, now, is, now remember the word devil, diabolos, means to cast down. He was cast down, and he's always wanting to cast God down. Dia, to thoroughly, balo, cast down. Throw down which accused him before our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's not just talking about tribulation only. They always have overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. All the saints who have ever died, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Now that <coughs> is what we're to be doing, dying to self. And if we have to pay, pay with our lives. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them and woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Doesn't have much time to get all of his evil work done and when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth he persecuted the church, the woman, Israel which brought forth the man-child, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness and into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. I know that there's a church here, people, and we get real discouraged. And I thank God. Look at that next verse. What's coming out of the mouth of the dragon? Water. Huh? Doctrine. What came out of his mouth in the garden? Enticing words. Doctrine. How about good words and fair speeches? Yeah. You remember the word serpent means to enchant, Nakash. to say smooth words, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines you have learned, mm -hmm. and avoid them because these are scorpions. They scatter the sheep abroad, they care not for the sheep, and they speak smooth words and fair speeches, and they deceive the hearts of the innocent, the simple. The, the sheep. Of devils. That's right. What comes out of the mouth is the doctrines of devils. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, daemons, distributing fortunes. If that's not the charismatic movement, at least part of it. That charismatic doctrine is hellish. I hate it. I'm the worst enemy of this so called Christian network. If, if I were God, I'd bomb it. I'd, I'd drop a. I'd drop a hydrogen bomb on every one of their stations. I despise that thing. It says good words and fair speeches. You can be rich. You see, everybody's looking for something with horns and looks like something out of a movie. No. What we need to do is be listening for what's coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Smooth words. And it, it, what is he trying to do with those? He's trying to drown the woman. It's Spiritual false water is what it is. Jesus is the water of life. Huh? False immersion. Yes. Isn't it? Bad. Hey, look here. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. What are they drowning the woman in the church with right now? What are they immersing her in? A false baptism, a false doctrine, a false covering. And Isaiah said they cover her with a covering, but not of me, not of my spirit. The Holy Spirit's the spirit of truth. It's false. They're false prophets. They're liars. And they teach for hire. They teach for money. They prophesy for money. That's back to Micah, the third chapter. And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood of false doctrine, easy words, good words in first speeches. And the earth helped the church. I know there's a church out there, and I get discouraged, and I know God's going to call his church out in Revelation 18 and 4. He's going to say, come out of her, my people, and be not a partaker of her plagues. Y'all see that? That's what this is. 
and the dragon was wroth with the woman. Well, wait a minute, let me read the rest of that. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The church is going to come out of the harlot. I believe there's many people being deceived out there right now. And when, when this thing, when this devil's doctrine, this hellish doctrine, these charismatics are preaching, and they're starting holding hands with Roman Catholicism. They're holding hands with that system. Yes. One of these days, we're going to see when people start facing the truth about that doctrine from hell that they call Christian doctrine that they preach up here at Tweedy City. That doctrine they preach on that so-called international Christian network, it is the devil's network. It's called DBN. Devil's Broadcasting Network. That's what it is. <laughs> Maybe they can tell who they are by that. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The word testimony is the word martyreo, and it means martyr. They're willing to die for their testimony. Praise God, isn't it wonderful? They better repent and give them their money. Back. You mean you can go you can go to heaven without sending money to D, to DBN? Yeah, DBN. I didn't think you could get to heaven. It is definitely it's, it's, it's the network of Satan is what it is. Do y'all know that it's the fastest growing group of people in the world? I heard one of those guys say on there. I heard one of them say that they're adding fifty five thousand converts a day. Converts, right. converts, not not Converse. God's converts, converts to their doctrine. Converse. More like proselytes, isn't it? Well, what they are, they're they're adding converts to this doctrine that's coming out of the mouth of the serpent, and they're not. It's not Christian. That's what I said. That's why we get so angry at proselytes. Yes, I've got so many. I was going to get into the mark, but we're going to come back to the mark of the beast next week in that last portion. The word mark just means, it's the word karagma, it can mean a stake on a boundary line. And didn't Satan move the bound? Mm -hmm. And those who operate inside the bound, and isn't God's law our boundary line, and we put it before our eyes? And every slave even every prostitute was marked with whose law, who they belonged to, it was before their eyes, and that's the law they followed. This is not a literal mark. This is a spiritual thing. We keep it before our eyes and on our hand, and where we walk and where we lie down and where we rise up. It's God's law, and we're following the boundary lines. You see, you go back to the garden, God set a boundary line. He said, don't eat of that tree. Eat inside my bound. And he said, Ephraim, or northern Israel, were like those who moved the bound. They just took the stakes up and they said, there. We eat the tree now. We suppose that gain is God in us and we've taken that we've taken gain of this flesh and that ain't nothing but the Babylonian system. That's nothing but the harlot there in Revelation 18 and when you read it, it just describes money and things and stuff and houses mm -hmm. and lands and that's everything this nation is preaching about. Right. I believe this beast that started in the garden is winding up Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And people say, but you just can't move that around. It has moved everywhere the system goes. We have their Christ mass. We've learned to consume our own flesh. The fool folds his hand, consumes his own flesh. We have their Valentines. We have their Ishtar. We've got their Easter eggs. We've got their Saint eagle. We've got, the, we've got everything they've got. And we're holding hands with them. And even in the 40s, the Christian church in America wanted nothing to do with Roman Catholicism. Now, it's, let's all hold hands. God loves us all. We all believe in Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, with our mouth. With a dollar sign in front of it. Watch, yeah, with a dollar sign. Yeah, this is Glenn. Got two dollar this signs. is Glenn says, this is the way the charismatics spell Jesus. There. And that's it. That's the way they spell it. Let me make that look bigger. They just make them as dollar signs. That's what I Yeah, we can make them. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Do a big one of those, Jim. It won't take but a second. Okay, I'll write one down. Explain this again here. This is their Jesus. Well, I tell you what, you got a red, white, and blue pen up there. You could really make it shine. You know, you know. Yeah, how about 
How about, let me see here, wait a minute, we'll have to do it this way. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now yeah, we get this right. You gotta be uh, patriotic. Anyway. Patriotic. There you go. There you go. Put that up. Y'all are y'all are <laughs> making me mess up. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll make it red, white, and blue. There you go. Jesus. And that's that's their Jesus. I told my mother. I care about my mother, and my father, and my brothers, and my sister. My brother on that network. He doesn't understand. I care enough about him to tell him he's in the devil's doctor. And Mama stood up here in the kitchen one day and she said, Now, Jimmy, that Dean said he would never have found Jesus if he hadn't found the charismatic doctor. That's how he got saved. <laughs> oh, he found the devil. He found a Jesus that will let him keep all of his money, all of his lands, his houses, and his cars. And it doesn't have to take a daily cross and die. That's the only thing they can find, though. Christ is the only has to find Jesus. Yeah, that's right. You don't find Jesus. He chases his elect down, crushes them, and Clobbers. says, Bow! Die! He, they believe in the Jesus that, that the real Jesus warned about, that, yeah. that <laughs> preached against the, uh, the, the repentance, that the repentance, the resurrection had already passed. Yeah. 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 Hymenes and Philetus. They preached... They overthrew the faith of some because they preached that the resurrection was something that Jesus did one time and they don't have to do any dying and he don't have to resurrect in their mortal body. That's what everybody preaches today. That's what they preach. The resurrection's they, past. It happened it's past. with Christ. It happened one time and that's it. Accept him. We certainly believe that. We certainly believe that. What believe, we believe we have to die and he has to come alive in us. And this, that doctrine of accept Christ that's a part of the devil's doctrine. Now, please, the thing we is, get mad at that. Jesus preached the resurrection. Yes, he did. And then he made himself an example of it. That's right. And the resurrection is life in us. In fact, the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Yeah. The gospel was preached to Abraham when he said, All nations will be blessed in your seed. And it'll be one seed, he saith not unto many, but as of one into thy seed, which is Christ. And that'll be your seed. And that's the resurrection of Christ in us. He is the seed that's in He's one seed. The same seed that's in me is the same seed that's in Tom. And in Terry. And in Carl. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to come back next week and talk about the mark. I may say some more things on toss to and fro, the earthquakes, the... This thing on the moon being turned to blood, that's the evil teachers. That's the, what that is. The moon being turned to blood is this flood that's coming out of the mouth because they're blocking the light. They're blocking the truth. They're scorpions is what they are. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your truth. Thank you for helping us to see your word come alive. Lord, Deal with our hearts and our lives and crush us under your hand. Get a hold of us, Father. Lord, we know the end is coming because the more we get into truth, the more we die to the world and the more depressed this world seems to us. We just don't seem to want any more of it, Lord. I don't want it no more. I'm so tired of it, God. Just finish crushing me, Lord. I know that'll be from now on, but just hurry up, Lord. Bring the fire. Turn the heat up, Lord. Cause us not to even care about the things of this life. Lord, if we can come to that, those are the things that we look after and we put our, set our minds on in the flesh, Lord. And Lord, we don't want that no more. God, just deal with us as we move into these very end times. Lord, we'll praise you. Because Lord, you, thou hast the words of life. That's all we know, Lord. You've got the words that we need. Deliver us from this false doctrine from the mouth of this evil dragon that comes from the mouth of these false teachers, these scorpions, Lord. And we'll praise you, Lord. Pray everything in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.